Israel is a very densely populated country. It's a tiny country about the size of New Jersey. We have terrains and landscapes that, that really vary. But tell us about some of the problems that this presents in terms of finding green energy solutions for this First, country. I would like to, to show you the general picture. The general picture is very clear. Just five or six years ago, uh, 80 or 90 percent of our electricity was produced from coal and other polluting fuels, like uh, mostly like diesel or, or oil. Right. Today, already in five years, most of our electricity is produced from natural gas and solar system. And in five years from now, it will be only natural gas and solar system. This means, this enable us, first we are uh, the first in the world in the termination of coal and other polluting fuels and replacing them with uh, natural right. gas and renewables. And second, it's enable us in just five years for, for the first time in our history, not to increase air pollution, but to reduce air pollution dramatically. We reduce air pollution from around 20, 25 power stations around the country by 60% so far. And in five years from now, when uh, uh, the use of coal will be finally terminated, it will be 95% reduction in air pollution all over Israel. This is significant revolution in Israel history. Uh, I would like to show maybe some, uh, some diagrams showing uh, uh, those data because it's really revolution in Israel energy history. The second thing that I want to emphasize is that we cannot compare ourselves to Albania or to uh, Switzerland or Norway or even to Germany or United States about renewables. Because actually in Israel, it is misleading to speak about renewables. It's renewable right. without the S because the only renewable which is really relevant to Israel is solar energy. And in solar energy, in the last five years, in 2015, we produced less than 2% of our electricity from solar systems. Now we are already first in Europe and second in the world in solar energy, according to the International Energy uh, uh, Association. Uh, we are second only to Honduras. We produce already more than 80%, more than 80, than 8% 8 mm -hmm. of our uh, electricity from solar system. And the new target uh, of 30% solar energy, I'm speaking not about renewables in plural, but on, in solar, right. will make us probably the first in the world. So uh, we don't have hydroelectrics that produce electricity day and night, uh, summer and winter. We almost have no wind, only a little bit at the Golan Heights, but it's insignificant. We have sun, a lot of sun. In sun, in solar energy, we are already second in the world. This is not enough. My goal is to make us number one in the world. Right. In six, seven years from now, we intend to become number one in the world. So you, you mentioned a lot of the reasons why we are seeing this goal of 30% renewable energy, you know, not energies, um, you, you know, by 2030 for Israel. But what is your response to those who say that Israel should have a higher renewable energy target uh, given other nations around the world? This is ridiculous. Uh, I mean, we cannot compare ourselves to Albania. In Albania, it's 99%, 99%. 0.5% renewables, because they have a lot of hydroelectrics. It's almost only hydroelectrics. In Israel, we have only solar system. 30% target mean that uh, at, at, at 12 o'clock afternoon, we will produce more than 100% of our electricity from the sun, when the sun rises. Unfortunately, the sun uh, produce electricity or uh, uh, provide us the energy only six hours a day. That's the average. So uh, we will make also a lot of electricity storage in order to extend it a little bit. But what shall you do in winter time when you have two weeks of cloudy days, no sun, no storage because you can storage only for a few hours. So we have a uh, uh, in, what we have is really only solar system, no hydroelectric, almost no wind. So in that, then? in solar energy, we are number 
two in the world, right. and we intend to become number one already in 2026 or 2027. So, but, so how does Israel get to a point where it's able to look at more than 30 percent uh, renewable energy in this country? The first 30 percent is... Uh, many people are very skeptics that we can arrive to 30%. Right. This is a, a, a gigant, gigantic effort. We will have to invest 80 billion shekels in um, a solar system and electricity storage and also in the transmission system in order to enable this to happen. Mm -hmm. This means actually that in the next 10 years, we shall do... Uh, uh, um, 250% more than we have done so far in renewables or in uh, uh, solar energy. Uh, we will do uh, uh, probably more than any other country in the world in uh, additional solar system. This is, uh, uh, this is really extremely ambitious. Mm -hmm. It took me a year and a half to examine that we can achieve this, although it's very challenging, and we can achieve this without harming our energy security. Now, I want to turn to a different issue here, um, and that is the traffic. It is fair to say that we have a very serious traffic issue in this country. Every hour seems yeah, to be peak hour if you get onto these roads. You have spoken about a plan to reduce private transport in cars uh, by 30 percent, but in 2018 we actually saw private transport rise by 15 percent. Tell us about your ministry's plan to combat this issue and to get people out of their cars and onto buses and public transportation. No, this is uh, mainly uh, uh, the business of the transportation ministry, but our aim is to enable uh, more and more electric cars or hydrogen cars, uh, both private cars, but uh, with special emphasis on trucks and buses, in order to reduce pollution, also pollution from transportation. Right. Uh, so far, we dramatically reduced 60 percent by now in just five years air pollution from our power stations, but now uh, uh, other fields like transportation, agriculture uh, 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 should join in. This is where I want to now turn to Lebanon, uh, where there are some very exciting talks uh, happening right now regarding resolving the issues with the maritime borders. Tell us about Israel's goals here. Is it to resolve the conflict, or is it to strictly make no concessions? No, no, it's the, we, we are coming with a, a real, uh, the only reason we decided to resume talks with our uh, 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 Lebanese neighbors is in order to try to resolve this tiny dispute. It's important for Israel. It's even critic, critical to Lebanon. I want to tell you, we are not, we didn't wait for the Lebanese. We are already enjoying the development, the exploration and development of gas fields in the Mediterranean. Right. It's not just the reduction of air pollution in Israel, which I just described. Uh, government revenues, billions of dollars already. Right. In the future, it's going to be tens of billions of dollars. Uh, contribution to the entire economy, reduction of 20% in electricity prices in the last six years, uh, due to, mainly due to the uh, cheaper gas. And we are even already exporting natural gas Ten years ago, it would sound inconceivable. Right, we are exporting energy to Arab countries, to Jordan and Egypt already. Well, we're going to get to that. And Lebanon, and Lebanon yeah. have nothing. So well, uh, what I, what I resolving this you, problem is important for us, but it's really a must for Lebanon. Now, Hezbollah has given their approval to go ahead with the negotiations. How can Israel prevent oil revenues from going to Hezbollah? Look, we... we, 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 we we cannot totally uh, secure. And by the way, we don't want to see Lebanon collapse. Lebanon is on the verge of collapse. Actually, it's already collapsing uh, because they have done many mistakes. One of the mistakes that instead of trying to come to compromise with Israel between the two lines, uh, there is not much difference or distance between the lines that we deposited in 2010 and tw in, uh, in 2010 and the Lebanese deposit. It's just a few kilometers. This, instead of trying to resolve it and to develop their own, uh, probably they have some uh, oil and gas resources, they were trying to, to, to beat the Zionist enemy. So uh, for 10 years they are beating the Zionist enemy and have got nothing. Well, now you're, you're at the table. And the we don't want is... to see Lebanon collapse, so we are ready to resolve this 
a, a dispute. Do you think we're going to see talks compromise. on land borders now as a result of this? Could this pave the pathway there? Hopefully. Look, I don't know yet if we are going to resolve this problem because we came with a known dispute uh, for 10 years. 10 years ago, Israel and Lebanon made their claims vis-a-vis right. -vis the UN, and there is some distance. And suddenly, we were surprised. The Lebanese said, no, we were wrong 10 years ago. Now we want even more beyond the disputed area. So this is, of course, this is a non-starter. This is a, a sheer provocation. Uh, but if the Lebanese uh, will come with a, a, a serious attitude, trying yeah. to resolve the already existing dispute, rather than enlarging the dispute, reducing the dispute and resolving, it's good for us, it's crucial for them. All right, well, Minister Steinitz, thank you so much for joining us. I guess the last quick question that I have for you here is, you know, we are waiting for the U.S. to can figure or finally count down its final ballots in the 2020 presidential elections. Uh, what is your take on the Democrats retaking control? Look, we are not interfering in uh, American politics. We have enough politics in Israel. It's tough enough. It's difficult enough. Uh, we have good relations uh, uh, with both the Democratic and the Republican parties and people. Uh, of course, uh, the, with Trump, tremendous things were uh, done uh, with Trump, including his assistant on the peace agreements with the Emirates and Bahrain and Sudan, and the uh, moving of the embassy to Jerusalem. This is significant. But Biden considers himself always. I met him first time when he was still a senator um, um, uh, 15 yeah. years ago, the chairman of the Foreign Relations uh, uh, Committee in the Senate. He was always uh, considered himself as a, a good friend of Israel. We are not going to interfere in the elections. It's very sensitive. We will know to work uh, with, uh, right. with, with people from both sides, and with the results come what may. All right, Mr. Steinitz, thank you so much for joining us on Global Eye.